following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The advent of Samael. When uh, visualizing the vision of Ezekiel painted by Raphael, we observed the four holy creatures <coughs> which in Kabbalah are called the Hayot HaKadosh. These holy creatures are the eagle, <coughs> the winged bull, the winged lion, and uh, the angel, which is the man into the image of God. In Kabbalah, we pronounce in the invocation of Solomon, a special invocation in order to bring the forces of the tree of life in activity in our own body, mind, soul, and spirit. One of the parts of this invocation, Kabbalistic invocation of the wise Solomon, states Hayot Ha Kadosh, cry, speak. Roar, bellow. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. These, of course, uh, uh, are the three times sacred name related with the first triangle of the tree of life, which is Keter Chokma Bina. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. And then we say, Shaddai, Adonai, Yochaba, Eheye, Asher, Eheye. Of course, if you read this uh, invocation or heard the pronunciation in the radio, in their website, immediately you understand that the names that we pronounced are related with the middle column, the middle pillar of the tree of life, which is, are formed by Malkut, Yesod, Tifereth, and Keter. In the world of Asiluth, of course, we pronounce the holy names of God related with the word of Atziluth. As you remember, Shaddai belongs to Yesod, Adonai to Malkut, Yod Chava to Tifereth, 
en Eheye Asher Eheye to Keter. In other words, this last invocation that we do when we pronounce this invocation, we are uniting through the tree of life, the spinal medulla, all the forces of God in order for us to perform the magical work that we want to perform. That's why we said, Shaddai, Adonai, Yod Chava, Eheye, Asher Eheye. Coming from the very bottom of the tree of life, up to the top, which is the crown chakra. And of course, the crown chakra is related with Keter, which is always symbolized as a force, as an energy that floats or that hoovers in the top of the head and which is uh, symbolized or uh, pointed with the mantra Ya. And that's why uh, we pronounce Hallelujah, 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 three times. Because this Ya, which is Keter, relates, of course, to the three primary forces, Keter, Chokma, Bina, which are always one. As you see, we always pronounce the three brains. The three brains are, of course, related with our head, heart, and sex. And this is what we are pointing when we are pronouncing this, we have to concentrate in our head, heart, and sex in order to bring from above the forces of the, of the three primary forces uh, when we said hallelujah for three times. And then we said amen, 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 three times always. It is because it's always related to the three amen which are Keter, Chokma, Bina. Of course, we are uh, pointing here the physical body again in order for, for, for us to understand how these four uh, living creatures, which are uh, named in the book of Ezekiel, are related with ourselves, with our physicality, mind, soul and spirit. So, run about the central nervous system, which is the medulla and the brain, there are four living creatures. For the brain and the spinal medulla is the throne of the innermost, which is Hesed, which is mercy. So when we pronounce, of course, our innermost, we know that the origin of our innermost is Keter, or the three primary forces. That's why the innermost that we always said is Hesed, which means mercy, is located in the brain and spinal medulla within any initiate. And uh, above in the brain, the forces of uh, the first triangle, Keter, Homa, Bina, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are of course around the medulla and the brain. In this case, when we talk about uh, uh, Hayot HaKadosh, the four living creatures, these in the head are sight, hearing, smell, and speech. Sight is the lion, which is in the right, related with Chokhmah. Hearing is the ox the bull, the wind bull, related with Bina, which is the left. 
You remember when we named the three primary forces in the brain, we said that the right is chokmah, the left is bina, and above, on top, floating, is always the mercy of mercies, which is keter, the father. Smell, related with the nose, is the eagle, which always, uh, we said, relates to tifereth. The eagle, of course, relates with the center, as you see, Tifereth, because above we have the lion and the bull. Tifereth, the eagle, and in Yesod, Malkut, we have the man. Remember that when we said Yesod, Malkut, we always understand that Malkut, the physical body, is the inferior part of Yesod, which is the superior part of the physical body the vital body. The man of Yesod, Malkut, is attached to the mouth, the speech. So you see, Tifereth is attached to the mouth, the speech. That's why when we say talk, in, the, in this pronunciation we says, cry, speak, roar, bellow. Speak belongs to the, to the man. Cry to the eagle. Roar to the lion. Bellow to the ox or the bull. Of course, when we are saying that, our concentration is in the head. Which is where we find these forces. When we, of course, do this invocation. Because the cerebrum, spinal nervous system, the central nervous system, is a connection of the tree of life in the physical body to the forces of the tree of life in the macrocosmos. So, the mouth of the head, as you see, connects to Da'at. That's why the man of Yasod Malkut is directly connected to the mouth and to the throat which is the at, and of course, the eagle is in the middle, which is Tifereth, related with the smell. The seven lower sephiroth that we find below the first triangle, which, is, which are Hesed, Geburah, Tifereth, Netzah, Hod, Yesod, and Malkut, form the body of Adam. So when we talk about Adam, meaning to the image of God, that refers to the seven lower sephiroth. So this form the body. The seven lower sephiroth form the body of Adam. But this happens when the Buddha, the essence, the consciousness, our soul, in Malkut, which is a physical body, by means of initiation, climbs through the spinal medulla to the word of God in the heart. So the soul which resides in Malkut has to climb to the tree of life, to the spinal medulla, to that. Because in that is the word of God. And the man is the speech, related with the mouth. So in order to talk the word of God, we have to rise the forces of the physical body in Yesod, which is the sexual force, through the art. That is what is called the tree of life. I mean the, the tree of good and evil. Because as you remember, when we talk about the tree of life and the tree of good and evil in Genesis, we always state that these trees share the roots. But we have to visualize. Because we have, always have the hieroglyphic of the tree of life 
that we always point. But the tree of knowledge is also in the middle, which is the spinal medulla as well. The roots are in your sod, and the top of that tree of good and evil, tree of knowledge, is that, which is the throat. Because through that, which is uh, uh, the tree of good and evil, tree of knowledge, is how God creates above. And above is that, which is knowledge, gnosis. Remember that it says in the beginning, God created with the word. And God said. But here below, in your thought, the roots of the tree of uh, good and evil and the tree of life, we create through the sexual act, through the sexual energy, through the genitalia. This is how we have to comprehend and to understand <coughs> in Kabbalah the forces of God. Because when we name uh, the advent of Samael, we have to understand that Samael it's him, itself or himself is our angel. Related with the sign of Aries. The sign that rules the head. And uh, Samael also rules the sign of Scorpio. Which is in Yasod. The sexual organs. Of course... Since we are talking about the advent of Samael, we have to understand that we are talking about the advent of the power of God. The energy, the creative energy of the three primary forces of Arius that comes down to the sexual organs in order for creation to exist. That's why the Sohar many times points at Samael. Because uh, Samael relates to the ox. As you see, the ox or the bull, the wind bull, relates to the vision of Ezekiel when it says that the feet of the creature that he sees in his vision has, of course, his legs of, and feet of a calf. And he has six wings. Of course, related with the creatures that are around the Ancient of Days, which is, of course, the mercy of mercies, the inner God. So this uh, wind bull relates to the Sephira Bina, as, you, as we said, which is the Holy Spirit. Because this bull, of course, is a force that descends. The Holy Spirit, Bina, relates to the Sephira Yesod. So from Bina descends that force into Yesod, which is the sexual organs. But when we study the Sohar, we also discover that among the 12 tribes of Israel, there is one tribe that is called the tribe of Dan, D-A-N, Dan. And of course, uh, this means judgment in Hebrew. There is a name related with a prophet, Daniel. That means God is my judgment. Or it means judge is my judge. That is Daniel in Hebrew. So this Dan, tribe of Dan, according to the tree of life, because all these tribes relate to the different sephiroth. When they are, of course, uh, in activity, which, as you remember, in other lectures we explain 
that the 12 tribes of Israel are 12 archetypes or spiritual elements that we have to develop. Dan is one of them. But when you go into the book of Genesis, when Jacob, which is the Bodhisattva of this great angel Israel, when he is blessing his children, the twelve, when he reaches uh, uh, Dan, which is located and related, I said, with the ox, the wind bull, Jacob, the Bodhisattva of Israel, said, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, a seraph, which is another kind of way of saying of say the fiery serpent or fiery serpent in Hebrew, a seraph, in the path that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy Yeshua. Yod he va he. This is what it says uh, literally in Hebrew. I was waiting for thy Yeshua. In other words, translated into English is, I have I was waiting for your Savior. Hmm? Yod he va he. So as you see here, this blessing of uh, the tribe of Dan, the child of Jacob, is pointing directly to the serpent. He says, Dan is a serpent, a viper in the way that bites the heels of the horse. So the rider falls backward. So when we see this, of course, immediately we associate, it, it's obvious that Dan, which is judgment, which is judge, is related with the Sephira Gebura. And as you remember, we always said, Gebura is ruled in the world of Bria, in the world of creation, by Samael. Samael is that, uh, the Logos, which is called the judgment of God. But this is the Logos that relates to the higher forces of Gebura. So, Dan, which is related with the ox, descends through Gebura into Hod. Hod, of course, is a fire in the human organism. Remember that when we name Hod and Nesh, and ne, uh, Netzach, the two sephiroth here, in the, in the human being, relates to the thighs. Hod, of course, relates to the kidneys. The kidneys are, is where we find the astral light. The astral light that descends into your sod in order for us to have sexual strength. This is called Aum in Hebrew. So this is how, of course, we have to understand through the tree of life how the forces of creation descends in our body. Above, in Gebura, we have the forces of Samael. That rule Arius. So, of course, Samael also relates to the wind bull. Because that part of the wind bull that is in the head, which is the Holy Spirit, relates also to Gebura, which is Samael, and to Dan, which is Hod. So, when we say the tribe of Dan, we are naming the power of the kidneys. We are naming the power of the liver as well, and the forces of the brain. So the Dan 
is one archetype related with the serpent. It is very clear in the book of Genesis. It says, Dan judge his people, and Dan shall be a serpent by the way. That's why when you read the book of Genesis and Exodus uh, uh, and the rest of the Bible, you find that Dan somehow is excluded in the book of Revelation. When the writer of the book of Revelation names all the tribe of Israel, instead of Dan, he names Manasseh, which is one of the sons of Joseph, because Joseph had two children. Ephraim and Manasseh. Those were the children of Joseph. Somehow, one of the children, which is Manasseh, take the place of Dan. If you don't know alchemy, you will think that it's just like people think about the history, about uh, certain superficial things that they don't understand. But of course, this Dan, which is the force of the serpent down into your sod, should be transformed into Manassas, which is, of course, a chemical transformation of the forces, of the animal forces, of the ox, which is the foot of that vision of Ezekiel, which are pointing us to the physical body. That's why the devil is always symbolized with hoofs. Because the devil is a sexual potency, the sexual energy in us. That's the devil. So, of course, this ox transformed when descending. And the devil becomes a serpent. How does that force of the ox, or the tribe of Dan, and the force of Samael becomes a serpent? Well, it's an energy. Because you know our person, it's an energy that descends and that we gather from the atmosphere. Because we uh, explain in other lectures that through the liver and through the spleen, which symbolize, of course, the lower forces of Netzah and Hod, we suck the energy of the environment. Remember that the blood is created thanks to the liver and to the spleen. And this is the blood that relates to the kingdom of Edom that the Bible talks about, which is the kingdom of the blood. Dom is blood in Hebrew. And that circulates on the body, the whole body. So that creative force of God that descends up from above descends and we have it in the body and expresses itself through the sexual organ which, in this case, is the devil that we had to tame, the devil that we had to conquer, the devil that tempted us. This is the mystery of the sexual transmutation that uh, is uh, written in different parts of the Bible and that we had to understand. So you find that uh, in the other lectures we explain that Jacob, which is the Bodhisattva of the Archangel Israel, when he is returning with uh, his four wives in order to meet uh, Esau, he of course uh, is afraid of Esau. Because he stole the blessings of uh, his father from Esau. And he doesn't know what Esau is going to do. You know? Because Esau represents the forces of the animal forces that come from above, from the ox, into the liver. All that force is here in the body. And control the body. So when Jacob, which represents the forces of the heart, wants to meet Esau, he's afraid. He might kill me, he says. Right? Why? What, where do you think 
Jacob and Esau meet in the sexual force. Because the heart, which is Jacob, brings the spirit of the lungs, which is God, El. In order to purify the blood. And then has to go also as purified blood into the sexual organ. But this Jacob is united with the spirit which, of the lungs, which is, is the breath of God. The breath of God enters to the nose, you see? And we said that the smell is tifereth, right? So the smell tifereth takes the breath of God into the lungs and purifies in the heart. But the heart also is tifereth, which is Jacob. And then it goes into the sexual organ as purified blood. But also the forces of the liver, which is impure blood, goes to the sex. And of course, the most powerful forces between Jacob and Esau is Esau. You can know that. Esau is the father of all this humanity. Because he represents the animal forces. He's a hunter. Acts through the forces of Samael in the body. In any animal. The forces of Samael, when, when Samael comes down into the animal kingdom, gives forces, forces of creation to the horses, to the bulls, to the lions, to all those animals that we find in the kingdom. And us too, the intellectual animals. We receive that strength. And that strength in the body is Esau, which the heart, Jacob, took the blessings before. So he's going to meet him. He's afraid. He says, I stole his blessings. Maybe he will kill me. So then uh, uh, he sends gifts and sends gifts to Esau. And he's left alone. And when he is left alone, an angel appears and fights with him. This is what is written in the book of Genesis. Who is this angel that fights with him? Of course. Ismael, because Esau gives strength to, I mean, Samael gives strength to Esau in the body. And Jacob wants to serve God in the sexual act. So when he is left alone in the field, as he is written in the Bible, this field is Yasod, the sexual organ. And there he meets and finds the forces of Samael that in the body is his own. And he fights with them. As you know in the Bible, Jacob fighting with Esau or with Samael, same thing. And uh, during that fight, the forces of Samael through Esau wants to reach the orgasm, the spasm of the animals. But Jacob is an initiate and wants to steal the fire from the devil, which is Esau. And during that fight, of course, the angel Samael feels himself defeated through Esau. And he touches the thigh, the hollow of the thigh, which points to the sex right, of uh, Jacob's leg. And then the hollow, the thigh of the leg goes false. It says that it is out of joint. After that, Jacob is, how you call this? Uh, uh, Limping. Hmm. What is that the angel Samael takes from Jacob in order for, for Jacob to be after that limping? He took the power of Esau out of him because he was fighting with him. That power is the power of 
creation. He took out from, it, from him, in other words, he took the animal power from him, and Jacob was left with the spiritual power of the sex. And that spiritual power is when Samael says, is blessing him. Because Samael says to Jacob, who are you? You fought against God and against the forces of men. Let me read it for you. What is thy name? Is what it says in the Bible. And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. That fought, or that fight, of course, was in the sexual act. In the very sexual act. And that's why that power of what we call the problem that all the students and all people have when they enter into the path is precisely the orgasm. That, that bestiality that we have within that expresses to the physical body, through the mind. And sometimes the students go to bed and they, they are praying and they have a, a nocturnal pollutions. Because the body, Esau, is very strong and doesn't care about God. It wants to fulfill, is a hunter, to pleasure the animal way in us. But Jacob defeats him there. After that defeating, he goes and meets Esau, and Esau is already defeated. You see? That's when he is alone. But then Samael says, and Jacob asked and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And the Bible doesn't say that it's Samael, but in so far, they say that it's Samael. And Samael said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. To receive the blessing of Samael, which is the power of Geburah in the very sexual act, is the most wonderful thing that you can ever receive. Because then the energy, instead of going out like the animal, goes up through the spinal medulla. Because he is in Shaddai. When you say Shaddai, Adonai, Yod Chava, Eheyeh, Asher, Eheyeh. And then the energy goes up. We have defeated the forces of the animal. And obtained the blessings of Samael. This is what we have to understand and comprehend in relation with this uh, uh, by biblical. And that's why Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. Peniel. But in the other lecture, uh, the speaker uh, explained that relates to the pine, which is that uh, uh, tree which goes straight, you know, is related with Saturn. The forces of the Holy Spirit. Winter. It's always green. Right. So that uh, uh, pine uh, is related with the mind. So when you uh, have uh, that uh, uh, pineal, the forces of the pine in your hand, that means that you have control your Esau, your animal mind, and you tame it. You tame it. And also, of course, that pineal is related, as you see, with the pineal gland, which is in the middle of the brain. It is called a pineal gland, or pineal gland, because really uh, the forces of the Holy Spirit are in the pineal gland, in the pineal. And Jacob, in the very uh, moment when he was fighting, he was taking the forces of the sexual Yesod 
to the spinal medulla to the pineal gland. It's called transmute, sexual transmutation or transformation. And this is how you comprehend what the advent of Samael is, physically speaking, in any one of us. Samael, of course, is a great archangel, a great logos, that rules the head that you see in Arius and in Scorpio, the sexual organs. That's why this uh, 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 archangel is uh, very well uh, known in Kabbalah, because any Kabbalist, any initiate that has to enter into the path towards Chesed, towards Keter, the mercy of mercies, towards God, he has to fight with him. If you don't defeat Samael in the very sexual act, then you cannot. You have to receive his blessings. Now you understand why, when we talk about Samael, we talk about the forces of creation of God. Remember that the book of Revelation uh, states in the chapter 5, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. If you read this literally and do not know anything about alchemy and Kabbalah, you just keep reading. You say, oh yeah, the one seated there in the throne is of course God. But you have to understand that the one that sat on the throne we said always that the central nervous system, the brain and the medulla, is a throne of God. So when you do what we explain to fight in the sex against the forces of Esau, which are your own animal forces, and transmute the energy, and you receive the blessings of Samael, and then your God, your own inner mercy, which is represented here as the elder of days, sits in your spinal medulla and your brain. Of course, to sit God there in your brain, your spinal medulla, implies a long process, which is explained in the other lectures. It's not just by believing in this that God will sit in your, in, in your brain and spinal medulla. You have to rise the energy. You have to create the four creatures that you see here in symbol that sustain him. The Hayot HaKadosh, the holy animals. They are holy because they are servant to him. It means the physical body, the vital body, the astral body, the mental body, and the causal body. Remember that we said physical and vital, we are naming one because it is one body. So when we have created that, then God sits in his throne. He's ready to go ahead in the initiation. And then he says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, which is of course, he said, the innermost, our own spirit, because we are advanced. A book written within and on the back side. That book is the man himself. Written within is inside us, not outside, inside, you know, inside us, in the consciousness. And in the backside. What is the backside? The spinal medulla is the backside. The tree of life that we all says that the energy has to rise there. Sealed with seven seals. The seven seals, of course, represents the true man. Malkut, Yesod, Hod, Netzah, Tifereth, Geburah, and Chesed. Those are the seven seals. The wisdom that we had to develop. This after, of course, we triumph.
And I saw a stone angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in the earth, you see, heaven, that, nor in the earth, Malkut, neither under the earth, Klipoth, hell, in other words, inferno, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, You know, there is always 24 elders, as we uh, know, in the head here. Because the head is the heaven of the body. So in the head of the body, in heaven, was one of the 24 elders. Or are with two elders for every zodiacal sign. Two elders for every tribe of Israel, in other words. These 12 tribes of Israel, in other lectures we explain, are related with the Sephira Chochma, which is in the right of the tree of life. There is where they are, in the Sephira Chochma, which is the lion. As we explained in the beginning. The Sephira Homa is the lion of heaven. It's called the lion of Judah. Because Judah is this area of the head. Hmm? Alchemically speaking. So one of the elders means one of the archetypes of Homa. Said. Whip not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Chokmah, here. Mean because in that area of the cosmos, Chokmah, the tree of life, the tribe of Judah are all of those monads, those spirits, which are self-realized, which are vehicles of God. Among the seven hierarchy there is a great rank of uh, individuals that are the forces of course of God which are the seven spirits which are before the throne right the throne of God remember is the spinal medulla who are those seven spirits are the seven archangels of the world of Bria Gabriel Raphael, Uriel, Michael, Samael, Zahariel, and Orifiel. Those are the seven spirits before the throne of God. Above and below. Above in the macrocosmos and below here in our own particular microcosmos. So behold the line of Judah, the root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Means that at that height, we are ready to receive the help of Christ. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts. You see, in the midst of the throne is of course the spinal medulla, this, the middle column of the tree of life. And in the midst of the four holy creatures here, I told you the four holy creatures are sight, the lion, hearing, the ox, smell, the eagle, and speech, the man. So when you see this around the, folly, uh, in the midst of the holy creatures, of course, in heaven, in the head, all that initiate. And in the midst of the elders, which we know are related with the zodiacal signs, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into the whole earth. 
he saw a lamb from the tribe of Judah. The lamb, of course, you know, is a baby ram. The ram is a symbol of Arius in the head. The responsible of this Aryan race, or fifth root race, that populates the five or more continents in the world, is Samael, because he is the fifth. And in Arius here, rule in the head. So that is the ram from the tribe of Judah that comes out in order to work, in order to do what he had to do. But that it says a lamb, because when that force descends through initiation into you, it's no longer a ram. A ram is in the head, a lamb is in the heart. Transform himself in order to sacrifice for you. So Samael, the ram, becomes a lamb in your heart. This is how it happened with Jacob when he fought with him. He received Samael, the ram, as a lamb in the heart. But from above, this is the, the advent, the dissension or descent of the forces of Samael in the body, in the mind, in the soul, and in the spirit. But this lamb is written here, has seven horns and seven eyes. <coughs> because the lamb symbolizes the seven horns, the seven bodies of the man. And the seven eyes, the seven chakras. Or as the book of Revelation called the seven churches. Which are seven magnetic centers in the spinal medulla. So the lamb has seven rays. Or expresses, in other words, through seven bodies, Malkut, Yesod, Hod, Netzah, Tifereth, Geburah, Hesed. Physical body, vital body, emotional body, mental body, body of willpower, the consciousness, and the spirit, the true man. Those are the seven horns. And the seven eyes are the seven chakras, which are related with the seven glands in the spinal medulla, or the seven churches. Microcosmically speaking, because there's seven horns and seven churches or seven eyes of the Lamb, microcosmically are the seven mighty rays and seven temples in heaven related with the, but they are, of course, related with the body of the initiate. So, and the Lamb came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Of course, this is your own particular spirit. He takes the book. That book is the man created into the image of God with the seven bodies. So that book, we will say, has seven pages. So that Chochmah, which in other words is Christ, takes the book from the hand in order to do what we have to do, to read, to develop, in other words, the powers of the 12 archetypes within the body. When we name about the Lamb, which is Christ, remember that, Gnostically speaking, Christ is not a person, but an energy that expresses itself in different levels. In the aims of or which is the uncreated light, he is one. In the first triangle, Keter, Chokmah, Bina, Christ is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Below, in the world of Bria, the world of creation, Christ is Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Michael, Samael, Zahariel, and Orifiel. Down below, his twelve, the twelve archetypes of the twelve tribe of Israel that descends from above, from Chokmah, into the physical body. So that is Christ. But we are naming here Samael, which is the fifth Logos, because 
this root race is his responsibility. And any advent of Samael relates with the advent of Christ. If you know uh, the rest of the book of Revelation, uh, the Lamb, of course, takes all the seals and unveils all the mysteries, which is what Samael on the earth did already through his books. But one thing is to do it in his books when we read. Because when we read, for instance, the books of Samael on the or Pistis Sophia was the last one, all those books are full of wisdom, knowledge. Beautiful. We enjoy. We die there and swim in that doctrine. But that is the explanation that we're reading. As he says in the Pistis Sophia, he says, we, referring that the forces of Christ, which is not one but many, he says, we, Samael on the earth, will unveil the rest of the Pistis Sophia, because that book written by the apostles of Master Jesus is a book of Kabbalah. But he unveiled only two books in the, in the, in the whole Bible. Gnostic Bible is six books. He said, I will unveil the rest at the half of the half of the time. Well, just to tell you in synthesis, the half of the half of the time is this which I'm explaining here. So when we reach the half of the half of the time, he unveiled the rest, meaning that no longer will be a doctrine in your head or in books, but within you, because you are another book. We are a book. And we need to read what is written in this book with seven bodies. So we have to wait. Samael comes and he says, I will take the seals of your seven pages of your book and explain it to you through the initiation. And then you, of course, receive the advent of Samael and he starts explaining unto you in your own consciousness, in your own spirit, in your own mind, in your own body, your own intellect, all the mysteries of his advent. His blessing, in other words, Uh, that's why it is written here that this uh, lamb that was slain has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred by thy blood he says always when we name here the sacrifice lamb somehow the blood is red with it So we see here how, and in the beginning, about how Esau represents the kingdom of Edom, the kingdom of Dom, the kingdom of blood, in other words, in Hebrew. The sacrifice of the lamb is in order to, to acquire the blood, the Christic fire, the Christic force, in order to redeem us to God. This is a process of transformation that we have to perform. That's why it says that the Lamb has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. The earth is a physical body. I mean, we have to control completely, acquire the control of all of our senses. The physical body, the earth, to become real prophets. And this is, I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, the brain and the spinal medulla, and the beasts and the elders, and the numbers of them were ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Well, if you keep reading that uh, chapter, uh, this is that every time that uh, the Lamb is opening one seal, there is, of course, great wonder in, in heaven. And the 
four holy creatures that says, Amen, Amen, Amen. Mm -hmm. Because relate, of course, to the three primary forces. Mm -hmm. The four uh, holy creatures, which are related to the four inferior bodies that we have to develop and that are connected to the brain. Every time that that happens inside of you and you acquire and develop wisdom, you said amen physically. You said amen emotionally. You said amen in your mind because you have three brains, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. The three brains. The brain, the heart, and the sex. You have to give the three brains to your God. And that's a process that is done through the advent of Samael in different levels. That's why here is precisely one of the chapters of Revelation that everybody talks about but do not understand. That is always associated with the second coming of Christ. With the Gnostics, when we read this, of course, we explain and we read very caref uh, carefully. We understand very well that uh, the Logos or the Archangel responsible of this root race in which we live now is Samael, because he is the fifth of the seven. And that's why in the book of Revelation, the writer explains very well how Samael comes into the earth. He says, And I saw heaven open. To see the seven, hop, uh, seven uh, I mean the heaven open, is to put in activity your chakra sahasrara, as we explain. When you say hallelujah, 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 open the, the, the pineal gland through initiation. And it says, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. We explain that judge meant, is related with Geburah. Dan, the tribe of Dan, is judgment, is judge. And of course, Mars, Samael, as you know in Greek and Roman mythology, is the god of war. And this is how, in the Jewish book of Zohar, it explained that Samael is the ruler of Madim, which is a Hebrew for Mars. And he works in the animal kingdom through war and through killing. Because that's Gebra. He's ready with blood. The lion persecutes the deer thanks to the forces of Samael in order to be fed. And multiply thanks to the forces of Samael in the animal kingdom. Esau also does it. But Jacob is different. Jacob is defeating Esau and doesn't want, he doesn't want to hunt animals like Esau. Jacob says, I have to fulfill with the fifth commandment, of, which is related with the Geburah. He says, you shall not kill. He wants to be a human being. And also says, I shall also fulfill with the sixth commandment of God that says, you shall not fornicate. Because any animal fornicates, reaches the orgasm, the spasm, multiplies the animal. But a human being says, I shall not fornicate. I shall not eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil. And this is how he defeats Samael and goes ahead. So that's why he says, that this archangel, Samael, is faithful and true. All depends how you, uh, in the, this uh, level, you work with it. But in the animal kingdom, he's faithful and true. He just accomplishes the forces of Bina, which in Kabbalah, you know, is Jehovah Elohim, the Lord God in the Bible. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. In his head means, in the sign of Aries, many crowns. Crown in Hebrew is Keter, meaning many elders of days. Because in heaven, Samael is the head of the ray of power. He commands many angels. 
legions of angels. That's why in heaven, in, in areas, has many crowns, many heads, many angels. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Samael in Hebrew. But we explained in other lectures already. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Do you need more explanation about that? He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His force in the physical body is the blood. He has the forces of Esau through the blood. He blesses Jacob through the blood because Jacob is the heart and Esau is the liver. Both relate with the blood. Samael, the energy of force of Samael in the physical body, works through the blood. So the vesture of Samael in your body is your blood. Hmm? Through the blood he works, whether down or up. It depends how you utilize your sexual energy. As explained in Jacob, fighting with him. And his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven follow him. We explain because he is the head. He has many crowns. Many angels there in heaven. Uh, follow him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That means chastity. That means that those monads or spirits which are in heaven, with that he commands, are individuals that are in chastity, chaste. They are not animals. They don't fornicate. That's why it says that they ride as him a white horse. A white horse is a representation of the matter. And the mind as well. White because you are controlling the forces of sex. If that horse is black, it's because we are a slave of the forces of, of, of sex. Because light is uh, white is light, and black is darkness. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations. Out of his mouth. Why? Because in the throat is the art, the doctrine, the knowledge of good and evil. Remember that the throat is the art, and the doctrine of Samael is the doctrine of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That sword that protrudes out of his mouth, which is his tongue, is a power, the meaning, the cabalistic forces of double sharp sword that hurt when you understand the knowledge. Remember that the fifth chakra is Vishuddha, the ethereal force in the throat that gives us power to teach and Power to understand the word of God. His name was the word of God. When you develop this in your throat, you understand the word of God. Remember that the man, the true man, is connected to God to the speech. The man is the speech. If you connect your mouth to your throat, which is that knowledge, chastity, you understand the word written in any book. The word of God. That's the power of Samael. That in many of his books he says that the tie rod is controlled by two forces. 
Venus and Mars. Venus and Mars here. And also here, Venus and Mars is up there in the pituitary gland. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Iron symbolizes willpower. Literally with the Gebura. And he treadeth the wine press of the fierceness and the wrath of El Shaddai. In English it says the Almighty God. But I said El Shaddai because you know that El Shaddai, the Almighty God, is in Yesod. So Samael says here, treadeth the vine press of the fierceness of and wrath of El Shaddai. That's the sexual power. Because when we ate from the fruit to the sexual organ, the wrath, the karma of God falls on us or fell on us. When we transmute that fierceness, that fire of the sexual energy, and then we receive the blessings of God through Samael. Uh, this is explained. Because that fight, when you do the real way, the path of the self-realization, Samael will bless you, but if you eat of the fruit, Samael will kick you out. Now you understand why the Zohar mentions Samael and Samael many times. But this is, of course, because whether for evil or for good, Samael takes us to hell or to heaven. It depends how you utilize the sexual energy. His power in the animal kingdom and in the human kingdom. And he has, or he has, on his vesture, you see, remember that his vesture is the blood, right? And on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings. In Hebrew, Kings means Malachim. So that is the heart. King of Kings, the Malachim are in the heart. Jacob, the ones that are triumphing. King of kings. So he is the king of those malachim. In other words, the power of Samael in the heart is that king, is that force that blesses Jacob, which is a malachim, among malachims. Because there are many angels. In Hebrew, when you name a, a, an angel, it says malak or malachim. And relates to the world of Tiferet. That's a Malachim. Which also relates also to the three wise men. Or the three kings that visited the Lord. Three Malachims. There are no kings here of this vulgar physical world. But initiates that worship the Lord. That knows about. Because they saw the star in the east. This is very symbolic. And Lord of Lords. You see? King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lord in Hebrew is Adonai. Adonai is the name of God in Malkut. So he is the Lord also of Lords. So when you achieve the level of Ishim, a true man, then you become a Lord. Of Malkut. Of course, that law of Malkut is your innermost. But the one that is ruling over that innermost is Adonai. And that points, of course, at the sexual force. In his thigh, he says. You remember that Jacob was fighting with, his, with Samael and the thigh was. And Samael has here a name written in his thigh. Lord of Lords and King of Kings. It's pointing to the sex. If you relate to the heart, the heart goes into the sexual force. So it's the same. In his vesture, in all the blood, 
is the life of the kings. And in the sex is the Lord of Lords. So all of these verses of Revelation are pointing to Samael. So when we state Kabbalistically that Samael is the avatar of Aquarius, we are, of course, just emphasizing what the book of Revelation says. The fifth angel is the responsible of this uh, Aryan race. And he's the one that is delivering the knowledge in this day and age. All the forces of the Lord the Christ. So, there is another uh, chapter, of course, in the book of Revelation that also talks about Samael. That also, with this explanation, you will understand. Revelation 9. And the fifth angel, you see, Samael is the fifth angel, as we explain, sounded. Because every angel is sounding a, tr a trumpet. To sound a trumpet means to deliver a knowledge. Because the word of God, when it is delivered to humanity, is like a trumpet. Son of a trumpet, awake, here is the wisdom. And this iron race is ruled by Samael. When he sounded his trumpet, he, de he delivered his doctrine. So when he sounded, uttered the fifth truth. And I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth. So that star, of course, related with this uh, explanation, is the same Samael, descending from heaven to the earth, as we explain, from the brain to Yesod in the physical body. This is how the seed of God cooks, descends into Yesod. And there, of course, is written, and to him, Samael was given the key of the bottomless pit. What is the bottomless pit? Of course, the bottomless pit is the un unfathomable abyss or chaos that is difficult or impossible to intellectually comprehend. There are three bottomless pits on or unfathomable abysses or chaoses. The first is that the thought that this is the primeval microcosmic chaos of the creative sexual force of the world out of which Kabbalistically is explained how the universe is formed or how God creates the universe with the power of the word. The second abyss is Yesod. The venerable micro, microcosmic chaos of sex, out of which Kabbalistically is explained how the human being is formed as above, so below. And the third abyss is hell. Or clip path. Of course, that abyss, Latin infernus, is the third chaos where the devolving egos dwell, hell. The subjective reasoning within the intellectual animal relates to this type of chaos, where only disorder reigns. Obviously, the chaotic disorder of the subjective reasoning within this humanity is what creates the common and ordinary karma. To have the key of the bottomless pit is to have the wisdom about the three chaoses, three chaos, the three abysses. Now we explain here, you understand how that relates to the superior initiations, just thought 
to the beginning of initiations. But also Klippath relates to that, which is hell. Because in order for Christ to clean us from sins, he has to descend to hell. It is written in the Gospels. That uh, when the Lord was crucified and died on the cross, he descended into hell. And of course, that is a process, an ecstatic process, in which the Lord descends and goes into Klippoth, into our own hell. This hell, Klippoth, inferno, that people call about, exists, of course, in the interior layers or infra dimensions of the earth. Anyone that experienced nightmares experienced those abysses. But in our microcosmic earth, which is a physical body, that clipoth symbolizes the subconsciousness, the unconsciousness, and the infra consciousness within which we have lust, anger, greed, pride, envy, gluttony, laziness. Etc., etc. That's our own hell. That's Klippoth. That is our own abyss. That's why it is written that when we close our eyes, we see that the earth is in darkness, empty and without form. Because this is what we see inside. The day will arrive if we follow the path of initiation. When then we close the eyes, we will see the light inside of us. God is light. So if we close our eyes and we don't see anything inside of us, we see only darkness with our clairvoyant eye, is because the third eye sees only darkness. The eye is the window of the body. If there is darkness, and if you see only through the eye darkness, how much are those darkness? This is what Master Jesus said inside of us. So, of course, as you see in the book of Revelation, that uh, the angel descends from heaven and traps the devil. There's a process. That devil or Shatan or the Bible, Satan, is us. Describe the devil. Envy, jealousy, lust, pride, vanity, laziness, anger, hatred. All of that is inside of everyone. That's the devil. It's not outside, it's inside. He has to descend. With the advent of Samael inside of us, he descends and traps the devil. He helps us to destroy it. And that's why the books are written. Of course, he says that when he opens the abyss, from the abyss comes smock and locust. Do you know what is the symbol of locust? Many people say, well, who are these locusts that go and, and to strike for five months every man that has not the seal of God in, in, in their forehead, but the sign of the beast, 666, and torment them for five months. And the men want to die, but they don't die. They have to suffer the karma. Five months is karma. This is how it is written here. So the angel that opens that says at the end of this verse or this chapter is Abaddon in Hebrew and in Greek Apollyon. Since we are talking in Hebrew mythology here, the symbol of Kabbalistic symbol of the Bible, let us just take Abaddon. What Abba means? Father in Hebrew. And what Dan Symbol uh, means in Hebrew, 
judge. Abba Dan. The judge, the father. Others say that it's called destruction. Yeah, it's also destruction. Destruction of evil, of course. Destruction of iniquity. Because it's through Geburah, you see. In this area of the left, which is Bina, Geburah, Hod, when you find Dan, the tribe of Dan, which is judge. Abba Dan is the judgment of the father, which is, of course, symbolized here at the Elder of Days in the vision of Ezekiel. The judgment of the father comes from Bina through Geburah into Hod, into Yesod, into Malkut. Because Yesod is the abyss that is opened. And that smoke that comes out comes from the third abyss, which is hell, which is the subconsciousness, infraconsciousness. Locusts. What is a locust? Let us understand that. The locust says uh, uh, in the book of the Bible, I don't remember which one, I guess it's Ecclesiastes, I guess. It says that they organize very well and they have no kin. They hold in bands and go everywhere. But they have no kin. And of course, uh, you remember the plagues that Moses uh, unleashed in Egypt. One of those were locusts as well. People always see that and associate that, of course, with the, the insects. They might think of seeing insects there in, in the earth, in the plague of uh, Egypt. Like one of the ten plagues that Moses did. And when you read this uh, book of Revelation, they want to see, of course, also this insect. But it's a symbol. It comes into my mind now, this other symbol. That you will see, if that's a sign of evil or good. Let me tell you the other verse in the Bible that I'm talking about. Elias, the prophet, is written in the book of Luke, I believe. When he says that he was feeding himself with honey and locusts. He was eating that in the wilderness. He was, uh, uh, his vesture was, of course, a uh, camel skin. And he was eating honey and locusts. Hmm? Remember, remember the speech, the mouth relates to Adam, to the men. He's eating locusts. In Kabbalah means he's studying the doctrine. That means the locust. To eat Locus means to do what you are doing right now. I don't know if you are digesting these locusts. But I am unleashing, I am delivering the locust, the knowledge, the Kabbalistic doctrine to you. And that will torment you for five months. Do you get that? You will be tormented for five months. Not literally five months. Because your conscience will understand the doctrine. And we said, well, now I have to pay a lot. Because these locusts that are unleashed in the world is the Kabbalistic knowledge. The doctrine of Samael that has the key of the bottomless pit. The secret of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that we are, uh, we are delivering to humanity. In order for humanity to follow or, to, or, or don't to follow and you will be tormented for five months because you have to pay what you owe. As Elias, John the Baptist, was eating locusts in the wilderness, we, the Gnostics, we also eat locusts. We gather and we eat locusts and honey, which is also the transmutation of the solar light into honey thanks to the bee. The bee takes the pollen from the flowers and transforming it into honey. That is alchemy. And to eat locusts is precisely to unleash the doctrine. This is what Moses did in Egypt. When he says, let my people go, and the Pharaoh said, no. Okay, I will tell you how. And he was given the knowledge. Do you understand now? And of course, all the Egyptians were receiving the doctrine, understanding, and feeling pain for it. 
because the doctrine of God is really a poison for the ego and bothers the mind. You see, the Egyptians were saying, don't mug me, don't bug me, because all the locusts were there in their heads. The doctrine, the knowledge, that's what it is. Otherwise, you will not understand the meaning of these verses of the book of Revelation. That explains very clear. Right? Because this, this says that the, those locusts have a king over them. Well, we think uh, we, are, we are demons. We are people with defects, vices. We are not angels. If we are not angels, we are demons. And when we receive this knowledge, we are out of Klippoth. Because we are in hell. But we have the opportunity to go out of hell with the doctrine of Samael. And when we study the doctrine, his Kabbalistic knowledge, the locust, we eat the locust like John the Baptist in the wilderness. Then, of course, we are going everywhere and spreading the doctrine. But uh, we receive the punishment, five months, because Samael rules Geburah, which is the wrath of God, which is the karma, in other words, in Sanskrit. That comes to us according to our deeds. So to receive the advent of the Lord Christ through any of his angels is a blessing. But also, you are tormented five months because you have to do the work. It's not like easy as many people think that you raise your arm aloft and say, I believe in the Christ, I believe in Jesus, and then you are saved. That's easy. It's a process of transformation that you have to, to do. And of course, that's why Samael, in this case, in this case, through their followers, is are symbolized by the locusts. The locusts that are spreading the knowledge among the demons, among us, in order for us to understand who we are and how we can transform ourselves. They have a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. And who is the angel of the bottomless pit? The angel of the assault, the angel of the Scorpio, that rules not only Klippath, but also Asia, Yetzirah, and Bria, under the command of Jehovah Elohim, Ismael. But he has many angels. One of his angels, of course, is Abaddon, which means the father or the law of the father through him, which represents as well the human soul, fall, fallen into sin. So when you enter into this path, you have as a king that. But if you follow the path of the civilization, that king will bless you up there. If you don't follow after the doctrine, that king will send you down there too, to Klippoth. Because he is a king. He rules Klippoth and he rules heaven. You see? An archangel controls heaven and earth. Is not a, a being that relates only uh, to heaven. And that's why in this day and age, <coughs> with the advent of Samael, humanity received the doctrine, the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. And Samael is starting to unleash the wisdom of hell the wisdom of Yasod, which is sexual magic, the wisdom of Da'at, which is the mystery of all that that we know in the cosmos. But he, uh, he was witness of the creation of this planet from the beginning, because he's a Logos. But of course, you have to understand and comprehend why Samael Catch or traps the devil, which is the ego, of those people that do, do not want to transform themselves. 
He takes them down into Klippoth. And of course, uh, if we follow as uh, Jacob the doctrine, he will bless us and take us to heaven. But that is a process. As we explain in other lectures, and you remember, I will refresh your mind. In heaven, Samael rules the fifth mighty ray, the ray of power. Samael is the fifth spirit before the throne. And it is because the seven spirits of God in the spinal medulla rule the seven chakras. And Samael, of course, rule the fifth chakra, which is the throat. Now you see how this fifth archangel relates to the throat, relates to the head, relates to the sex, relates to the blood, relates to the heart. Of course, every single spirit before the throne of God relates to all the forces. But we are explaining Samael because it's what this humanity has waiting or was waiting for a long time. The fundamentalists are waiting for the second coming and they always name and read these uh, verses of the book of Revelation. And they said that is the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Without understanding that in the cosmos there are 12 saviors. No one, 12. Of course, Jesus represents the highest. What you see in the Last Supper, you see the 12 apostles and Jesus. 13, which is a symbol of death. In Epistle Sophia, Matthew Samael says there are 12 saviors, which relate to every of the 12 apostles of the Lord, which relate to the 12 planets of the solar system. 12, no 9. Gnostically, we know that this solar system has 12 planets, counting the sun, because for us, the sun is also another planet. It's a center, of course, that's why it's the sun. But after Pluto, we have Vulcan, after Vulcan, Persephone, and after Persephone, Clarion. Those are the 12 planets that uh, rotate around the sun. Every planet is a house, it's a temple of a logos, of a force. It's not a person, it's an energy that we call logos. Among the twelve, of course, there are seven main ones, the seven uh, 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 special rank, which made by seven, which are the seven spirits, which always uh, we relate to the seven uh, days of the week. Because the number seven is very uh, special in the Bible and in Kabbalah. But of course, after the seventh, we have other five. And each one of them can work or channel the forces of the Lord, Christ, in order to help this humanity. Of course, Jesus of Nazareth, the master of Eramentho that came 2,000 years ago, came to represent the work of any savior. And any one of us. Because it was necessary for the work of the Savior to be represented by somebody, by some master. And of course, the highest of all of them, the master of Averamento, represented the work of Christ. He is, of course, above the twelve, above the seven. There, in the Ain, in the unknowable divine. And he commands under the master of elemental, master Jesus commands, is Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Michael, Samael, Zahariel, and Orifiel. And the other five, Logoi, 
or archangels or the other planets. Which name, I don't know. Don't ask me that. And if I know, I won't tell you. <laughs> so then, those are the seven, because only the seven are, are uh, how you call, have permission to, to utter. But of course, this is a mystery that are written in Kabbalah. So, Master Jesus is the boss of the White Lodge, of the White Hierarchy, in this solar system. He's on top of all. But imagine, he has many things to do. So he needs help. Samael is the fifth helper. And the fifth helper is working in this day and age, in this Aryan race. No one can do his work but he himself. Because he is responsible of this root race that populates all the earth. And as he came as an avatar, at the end, because we are at the end, you see, this humanity has a lot of karma. So Gebura came himself to deliver the doctrine that pertains to him in order to help us. And that's why he sent his Bodhisattva. That's why you write in our books always Samael on Veor. That name that you read in our books is the writer, the human soul of the Archangel Samael. And this is what we have to understand. Samael is the Archangel that rides the white horse in heaven. And his bodhisattva, Samael on Vor, was sent to the earth in order to write the books. He had a physical body, and he was writing the books of his father, the doctrine of his God. That's what he said. The wisdom that I give is the wisdom of my God, my father. This is it. Every single angel or archangel, seraphim, cherubim in heaven, has their own particular vehicle. Every single master in heaven. A self-realized master, of course. Because when a, self, when a monad is not self-realized, it's not an angel. It's a simple, a simple monad that can become that. So that's why when the Lord Christ which expresses himself through the one, through the three, through the seven, through the twelve, through the twenty-four, to the forty-eight fires. Because all of them represent, as you know, twenty-four elders, twelve apostles, twelve tribes, the seven spirits behind the throne. All of them are the expression of the same fire, the same Lord. So when the Lord says, I will come back, he will return and he comes back through any of his fires. That light will shine in any of his fires. That's why we state any master of the day from Christianity, from Judaism, from Islam, from Buddhism, from Taoism, from Zoroastrism, any religion is a vehicle of the Lord. It's a light of the Lord. That's why I remember that when we were in Mexico, around the Master Samael on the or the Bodhisattva of Samael, he was saying, Quetzalcoatl promised to return to Mexico in order to give the treasure, the wisdom to help the Mexicans. He says, Here we are delivering and accomplish and fulfilling. The promise of Quetzalcoatl. This Quetzalcoatl is a master of the Aztec pantheon. And he promised to return and to give the knowledge, which was fulfilled through Samael on the earth. Babaji, which is another Christ, also promised to deliver the doctrine to India. And that was accomplished through Samael on the earth. Because he is the vehicle in this day and age of the avatar of Aquarius. And of course, this is how we explain the advent of Samael. 
That happened, of course, when, when, when Gnostics talk in, in other levels about the advent of Samael, they explain how Samael, the Logos, came into Samael on the Or in Colombia. And we know that. But we are explaining here about the Logos that can come down also. Because if Samael promised to return, he said very clear, the Lord should return in our hearts. The second coming of the Lord is always in the heart. When he said, I promise to return at the half of the half of the time, that is in our hearts. He can come physically. But believe me, it is better if he returns into you as fire than to come back physically. Because I knew him physically. I mean, he was in Mexico. He can come there resurrected. As a master, resurrected master. So, but it's better if he sent his Holy Spirit into me. In order for me to go ahead and to receive the advent of Samael. In order to perform the great work. That is to return at the half of the half of the time. And it is what he wants to, all of us to understand. This is what is in the, among the fundamentalists, they said, the second coming of Jesus. That Jesus means Savior. Yeshua. And as it is written in the beginning, I'll tell you, Dan. Says Dan, which means judge, shall judge his people as one of the tribe of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way. A seraph in the path. By the way, the seraphim are the angels of Gebura. Fiery serpents, the seraphim. So he will be a seraph in the path that biteth the horse heels. The heels of our body is the sexual force. Remember that when Jacob was born, he was holding the heel of Esau. There's a meaning, wisdom there. Doesn't mean the sexual force. So that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O oh Lord. That's what the blessing of Dan is. The salvation of the Lord right there in Gemurah. Do you have questions? <coughs> Don't chug with the locust. Don't chug with the locust. Don't chug. And I was just reading that. There is something I want to ask, but I don't know what it is. I don't know. Don't I choke. I said, don't choke with the locust. <laughs> that is the knowledge that is just spreading now all over the world, you know? The Kabbalistic knowledge. Yeah? Yeah, the book of Revelation talks about the beast 666. Of course, when we number the number 6, we know that it's Tiferet. The number 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 Sephira, or 6 sphere of the tree of life. Tiferet is a symbol of the human soul. Of course, we have part of that human soul in us. Remember that in order to go from this level in which we are, which is the physicality, and which is the assault in the sexual force, we go up through the spinal column, which is precisely the ladder that Jacob saw in his dreams, the spinal column. You go up there to that which is called Shamajim, heaven. 
But who is the one that goes up? The one that goes up is the one that is down in the bottom. Because if you are already up, you don't need to go up. All of us are in the bottom. And who is the one that is in the bottom? The beast 666. Chayot in Hebrew. The chayot, of course, the symbol of the animals that we have within. Chayot are lust, anger, envy, greed, pride, laziness, gluttony. That's why it says that the beast has seven heads. And in every head, a name of blasphemy. Lust is a blasphemy to God. Anger is a blasphemy to God. Envy, pride, greed, gluttony, laziness. The seven deadly sins. Those are the name, the blasphemy in each head of the beast. But of course, the beast expresses itself through our three brains. Through our mind in the head, through our feelings in our heart, through our actions, through the motor, instinctual, sexual brain. So in each part of those egos that we named, or defects, vices that we have, the consciousness, the human soul is trapped, is bottled up. So if we want to name the soul trapped within the beast, we have to say is the number six trapped in the head, the number six trapped in the heart, the number six trapped in the sex. Six, six, six relates to the three brains that we have. <coughs> through the three brains is how the beast work through us. So in other words, the beast 666 with seven heads is a whole humanity. And it's us. Because humanity is made by each one of us. Society is the extension of the individual. Society exists because the individual exists. The beast humanity exists because the beast, individual, individually speaking, exists in each one of us. The big 666 came from the abyss, from Klippoth, right? From hell. From the subconsciousness, from the infraconsciousness. Hmm? And of course, that beast, that demon, is delivering the locusts. Because we are not going to boast ourselves here of angels. All of us are demons. But we are sharing the locusts. We are spreading the knowledge everywhere. The Kabbalistic knowledge, that's, those are the locusts, the symbol of the locusts. And of course, we can be saved if we take advantage of it, or otherwise, the opportunity that we have right now to go out of hell will be closed, and the beast will return into the abyss, as it is written in the book of Revelation. You have another question there? All of them are the same. What happened is that the being, oh, can uh, the explanation, I mean, the question is, I hear this, but I guess I don't know if you heard the, the question. Is the innermost, the being, and what? Our own particular father. And our own particular father, the same being? Yes. Our father who is in heaven is, of course, uh, our innermost is our own monad made by three uh, particles Chesed, Geburah, and Tifereth. That's the monad, which is in heaven. And we are part of that monad. We are what we call Buddha, essence, consciousness, the soul here in this physical world. The beast, 666, that want to stop being a beast and want to kill himself and to return to God. But the one that is going to return to God 
is the son of man. Because nobody went up to heaven. But the one that came down from heaven. The son of man. Who is in heaven? Who is the son of man? Son of Adam. In other words. Who is Adam? Is Hesed. The true man. The spirit. That is Adam. Our own being. That is Adam. And the son of that is Abel. The human soul. The son of Adam. The son of man. That came down. That particle of God. Which is the soul. Came down from heaven. Is the only part. That can go up to heaven. This is precisely what we have to understand. It is written. Because people want to go up to heaven. With their lust. With their envy. With their greed. With their gluttony. In other words. The beast. 666. Wants to go to, up to heaven. No. The beast has to be annihilated. Sent to hell. And to liberate the soul from it. In order for the son of man. The son of Adam. Abel. Who is dead. Because Cain the mind killed him. Now we have to kill Cain. And to resuscitate Abel. Through initiation. In order to go to heaven. And that of course is a union. It's called religion. To relegate. To, re, to reunite. To unite again the soul with the spirit. That is called religion. Religion is not going and sharing a doctrine in any church. Religion means... To unite again Abel with the spirit. To unite again Abel with Adam. Adam is the spirit. Abel is the soul. Abel is dead. To resuscitate. Only Christ can resuscitate Abel. The son of man. And that is precisely the point. We have to understand that we are here. And we are dead. Spiritually speaking. We have to resuscitate. Christ can do that for us. And to unite us with our inner most. When we are united with our inner most, and then the inner most sits in his throne, the spinal nervous system, the brain and the medulla. And he says, I have a book now, thanks to God, and I need to read the book. And then he receives the Lord. He receives Samael, the advent of Samael, in order to open the seals of the book. And then that is, of course, the superior part of Hesed, the superior part of the innermost, which is Christ. Christ is the head of any spirit. But each one of us, of course, is united to the Christ, to our inner being. So when we say our inner being, we begin from Hesed, up to Bina. Gebura, uh, uh, and uh, Keter and beyond. The Ein Sof is also our inner being. But you know it's a dissension. We are the soul. Part of that being. Well, remember that Samael is the, ray of, uh, the king of ray of power. Invoke Samael. Samael is willpower himself. And of course, uh, uh, by invoking him inside, because he is responsible of this doctrine, you will receive the strength. Samael can help you in any level. Because remember that Samael is the king of hell and heaven. We are in hell. So invoke Samael and ask in order to, uh, to go up, he will bless you if you defeat Esau, your lust. And we have to understand that, that in this path, we always receive help if we show that we are working. This is how we receive help. Ask and you will receive. Knocked, it shall be opened unto you. But when you knocked, you have to know what to ask. Don't ask things in the earth. Because if you ask to God for things on the earth, they say, well, 
nobody, it's a, everybody preaches there in the TV and radio that if you behave good, you will have a lot of money and a happy life. You know, like that is the purpose of the doctrine of God, to give a lot of money to everybody. That's, that's stupid, you know. You can have a lot of money in what? Dis, disjoint with God, you know, psychologically speaking. Because the, the, psychologically speaking, is what we want. And that's willpower. Of course, uh, you have the book of runes. You can perform, uh, perform the rune, uh, the, the rune os, that give you willpower. And also the rune uh, not for willpower. Uh, yeah. Another question? somebody who commits it or put themselves in a situation for somebody else to take their life. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, explain that? About suicide. Well, life is given to us as a free, as a gift. And of course, life relates always to Bina, the Holy Spirit, which is the Lord of creation. That life descends through Geburah, which is Samael, through our blood. And that's why we have in our body life. When we commit suicide, we go directly into Samael, which is the life in our body, which is Geburah. So, of course, Geburah, which is the law of God, will punish us. Because the commandment of Geburah is, you shall not kill. And that commandment means outside of your body or your body. The only one that can kill is the force of Bina, the Holy Spirit, through Geburah. Instinctually, it does it in the animal. The lion, the tiger, kills the deer in order to be fed. That's instinctually. But we have intellect. We reason. So we have to know how to use that power under the law of God. Otherwise, we are punished. We receive karma. The, punish, the punishment for those people that kill themselves, that take the life of God from within their body, that precisely the explanation, is, of course, to return again into a new life, a new body, because uh, it is written that we had to have 108 physical bodies in order to do what we had to do. That person, when he or she reaches the same age, when he committed suicide in his or her past physical body, he will not think in dying. He will wish to live, but he will die at the same time. That's the punishment for the people that commit suicide. To die in the next life at the same age, and everybody, and he or she, will see the whole life ahead as a blessing. If he marries, or she marries, or whatever, or he does, but he, by any circumstance, will die at that age. Again. Again in order to punish, in order to learn his lesson. I mean, he, he or she dies again, but this time for the love of God. In his past life, he did it under his own evil will. Now God will say, I am the one that commands death and life, not you. Now that you want to live, behold, he's gone. You mean, well, that's another, that's another thing. Somebody that kills somebody else in the next life, he will be killed by the other one. That's the law of reoccurrence. Okay, so that's, okay. that's, law of, that's law of karma and reoccurrence. You were killed, 
now you are going to be killed. I mean, you kill somebody else, now that somebody else in a new body will kill you. That's precisely the, the vicious circle of reoccurrence. And in the next life, the other person will kill you again. That's the law of karma, vicious circle, you know, of cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. That's why it is good to meditate and not to kill. Well, that depends on the ego, right? Because in this day and age, you see that if uh, one of the family kills uh, uh, another member of another family, the other family will kill that, and this is a kind of egotistical hatred and, and revenge that unfortunately is very common in a, a day and age, right? The only way to stop that vicious circle of, of karmic circle is by comprehending your ego. Self pride, self esteem, self importance in combination with hatred and anger. You know, because you, we always justify killing because of the flag, because our religion. This is, unfortunately, this is what happened in this day and age. People go and kill because of their religion, because they think that after killing this group of people, they will go to heaven. It's what they believe. But the problem is that they don't know about the law of karma. They don't go to heaven. They go down there. Yeah. Because the one that commands life is God. In your body. And outside of your body. Okay. So that commandment, you shall not kill, is given to us intellectual animals. Why? Because we have the ego inside that likes to kill. Because we come from the animal kingdom. You go to the lion, to the pride of lions there and says, okay, God says, you shall not kill. The lion said, okay, let me show you. And they will jump on you. Right? Because they don't understand. They are following other laws. And in that level, they are willing to kill by the instant. But we are intellectual animals. And then God says, okay, now you are a soul entering into this human kingdom. Let me tell you, you shall not kill now. Because you have intellect, reasoning, and you know uh, about good and evil. You want to advance, you have to obey my law. Now you are not going to kill. And if you do it, well, let me show you. It's precisely this planet, this is entangled in this law. Right? People think there is a law that you have to believe. And if you believe in that, it will accomplish. No, the law is there, it's very clear. Whether you believe it in it or not, if you don't follow, you will be punished. That's called karma, cause and effect, which is explained in many levels. And that's, of course, Geburah, because that's the power of Samael. You see, Samael has a po that power in the animal kingdom. This is Madin, war. He's calling also the angel of destruction. Samael also is called the angel of death. In the animal kingdom, this is how he acts. And also in the intellectual animal kingdom. Samael said in Mexico, when we were with him, he says, we are delivering this doctrine to humanity in order for them to be free of klipas and to enter into the other levels of the tree of life. But this humanity like war and more wars. So therefore, is what they want is what we will help them to do. Right? Because he is... The God of war. He has the power of God of killing and destroying. Abaddon, Apollyon, destroyer, whether outside or inside of us. But he's leaving his doctrine in order to say, okay, follow me in the upper way, not, not as an animal. As an animal, you fornicate, you're following Samael in the animal level. If you kill, you are following Samael in the animal level. You want to follow him in the human level, you shall not kill. You shall not fornicate. And then we go up. At least we start doing that. 
and this is set, is what they're telling me. There. <laughs> because it's time. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,